Hey YouTube, your favorite breakup expert here, Brad Browning. And today I'm doing something completely new. Um, I've brought in a guest for one of my videos for the first time. And today I'm joined by Amy North, uh, author of The Devotion System. And today Amy's gonna talk to me about how to reattract your ex-boyfriend. Now, Amy, you are a women's dating expert. Is that safe to say? I am. Perfect, so this video is just gonna be for the ladies out there. And we're gonna be talking about how to reattract your, your ex-boyfriend. So I've got some questions for Amy here that I've prepared. She has no idea what's coming, so it should be interesting. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about how to retract your ex. So, perfect. Um, so one of the things I like to do is talk about what uh, what women should not do uh, first, and what because I think a lot of women they really need to know what mistakes are going to kill their chances because they're very common mistakes, right? Um, when it comes to getting your ex back. So let's start there. Um, so what is the biggest mistake that women make um, when they're trying to, to get back together with their ex boyfriend? All right, I would say hands down the absolute biggest mistake women make is letting their ex know that they're trying to get them back. Yep. And I mean, Agreed. there's so many different ways this happens. Either they directly tell them they want them back or they post online about it. Um, sappy lyrics, sad songs, the whole yes. works. So The Facebook update with the emo lyrics, yes, yep. Yep, yep. that is definitely the big one. Don't do that please, ladies. Uh, it's definitely not gonna help your cause. So, you, so basically, um, everything has to be done uh, under the radar, subconscious level type thing? Yes, exactly. Yep, it's when he knows that, or when he believes you don't want him back, that you're actually going to have a better chance of getting him back. Okay. Um, I mean, guys are so stubborn. If they think it's your idea, yeah. they're not gonna go for it. Fair he enough. has to think it's his idea and go from there. We've kind of already talked about this a little bit, but what are some of the things that women can do to make sure they don't do this, basically, um, to they don't let their ex know that they want them back? So, I mean, the biggest thing, and you know very well about this, is the no contact period. Yes. Removing yourself from his life for about a month um, will give him the chance to miss you, and it'll also give you the chance to avoid making those mistakes of seeming needy or desperate or clingy. Right. So. And then eventually you'll get to a point where you it's okay to say to your ex-boyfriend, you know, you, I, I want you back or we should get back together, but not until you've already basically got to that point anyway, right? Without telling them, basically? Oh, for sure. Okay. And I mean, there's a whole part I talk about in my program, The Devotion System, uh, where I talk about the things that women should do before they can move on. Um, right. Setting I the stage, it, basically, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yep. I call it the past system. So it's about processing your emotions, accepting that, you know, the past is in the past, it's time to move right. on, um, adopting a positive mindset and just kind of letting go of what's happened to kind of make room for something new. Aside from the no contact period, which we just talked about, um, what do women need to do themselves uh, in order to, to make themselves as attractive as possible to their ex-boyfriend, in the eyes of their ex-boyfriend? Um, a big thing, keep busy. Yes. Keep busy, have fun, go out with your friends, pick up a hobby, you know, do all the things that you've been meaning to do but you haven't been doing because this guy's been taking up all of your time. So don't sit at home looking at your ex's Facebook profile for hours on end? Exactly. Basically. Yep. Don't stalk him online. He will find out. Someone's going to tell him. Don't be liking his posts. Don't be watching his Instagram videos. Just, you know, keep busy. Basically just block all thoughts of your ex out of your life exactly. Yeah, and I mean, it's way easier said than done, of course. I'm. I'm sure you know that from experience as well. It's, it's right. tough when you let go of... But you can choose not to act on those desires, right? Exactly. Um, which is the right strategy because then you don't, you don't want to set off the red flags, right, in your ex-boyfriend's mind. Exactly. He needs to think that, you know, your life is going on without him. You're doing great and he's the one who's missing out, not you. Right. And he's going he's gonna to know. I mean, you don't, even if you're not telling him, he's going to know that your life is awesome because you're going to be, you know, posting about it on social media, right? Oh, totally. Um, you advocate that as well, yeah. Basically yeah. just using all the channels you have available to sort of give him the message but not actually say it. So Amy, I know one thing that you teach your clients a lot is basically how to project uh, confidence outwardly, right? And I think that in a breakup, uh, hopefully you'll agree, in a breakup it's really even more important because you really want your, your ex to be surprised at how well you're doing after the breakup. Um, and one way to do that obviously is to project this you know, self-confidence and self-esteem. So what are some of the ways that women can sort of project that confidence uh, after a breakup and basically use it to look attractive to men? Because I mean, every guy likes a confident woman, right? Oh, for sure. And so. I mean, it, being confident, it sounds like such a tough thing to do. It sounds like you have to love every part of yourself to actually be confident. But really, there's it's so easy. You can fake uh, it? Oh, for sure. Okay. Fake it till you make it. Totally. Um, I mean, you know, making smiling a habit is a big thing. Right. Walking around with a smile on, not only will it put you in a better mood, but it's contagious. People are going to be smiling back at you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another big thing is posture. You know, so making sure that... Exactly, you're sitting up straight, your shoulders are aligned and everything else. Because I mean, if you're going out in the world and you're slumping all over the place, you're not going to look like the most confident person. And that's the kind of change that everyone can make easily, right? I mean, it's not difficult, um, but it sort of puts you in that group of people who, you know, oh, look exactly. like you have genuine confidence. Exactly. Yep, you look like a million bucks. And the last one that I love to tell the ladies is to wear sexy underwear. 
Really? I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but if you know what you're wearing under your clothes and you know how good you look under your clothes, it's going to make you feel confident. Sure. Whether you love your body or not, it's just those little tiny things you can do that will just boost all the confidence in the world. I'm going to grab some thongs on the way home from work today. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Um, moving on, I, I want to talk a little bit about social media as well because, okay. I mean, it is 2017. So social media is a huge part of our everyday lives. And social media is also a great tool, right, which you can use to basically send subconscious messages to your ex or to just sort of make yourself attractive to him, right? You can sort of project those messages through social media. Yes. So um, that's my question basically is how can you use or what are some ways you can use social media to get him back? So I mean the biggest thing again is just showing him that your life is awesome, that you don't need him. So you know it's a matter of if you go to a restaurant, check in when you're at the restaurant on Facebook. Right. You know? Now you do want to probably be a little careful with this if you're not the type that normally does that kind of thing. So if you don't normally make posts on of Facebook course. about what you're doing, Sort of, you know, don't suddenly all, all of a sudden check in four times a day, right? No, no, Make he's going to catch on. He's Ex going to catch on. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be pretty obvious you're trying to send a message. But. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, other than um, signing in places, posting photos of you with your friends, if you can have some friends in there that are males that he doesn't necessarily know, that could even create a little bit of jealousy there. So that's always good if you're trying to get your ex back. Um, other than Ladies, I'm available to play friend if you want someone to, you know, oh, yeah, hang out find, with find Brad. Brad he'll, will be, yeah. He'll help you out. <laughs> Sorry, carry but uh, no, just staying active online is a big thing. So okay. between photos, positive posts, positive, positivity is so important. No one likes going on someone's page and seeing it littered with, you know, just tragic news. Negativity. And, you see it all the time anyway, so at least be that breath of fresh air on your profile. And that's what your ex is going to stop what they expect, right? They, they expect the opposite. They expect you to be doing those emotional, sad, you know, exactly. heartbroken posts and things. Um, yeah. So by doing the opposite, you're going to be sort of startling your oh, ex. Oh, he's going to be so surprised. Now, what happens when you accidentally run into your ex or you have to contact your ex? I mean, what do you recommend ladies do when they, when they, you know, they just can't avoid running into their ex-boyfriend? Yeah, I mean, that's a big one. And it does happen. And the last thing you want to do is run the opposite way. Because if he sees right. you doing that... You're not going to look. Because you're confident, yeah. right? Don't forget, you're, you're projecting confidence and a confident person doesn't run away from a social encounter, right? Exactly. So the biggest thing is stay positive. Right. So when you see him, be pleasant. Ask him how he is. Be polite. No matter what, do not bring up the relationship. Do not reminisce about it. Do not talk about what went wrong. You know, just simple, how are you? What's new? If you want to, you can tell them a little bit about what you've been up to. But okay. you want it to be genuine as well. So you don't want to say, you know, oh, I did right. this and this and this and this and this. Or he's going to be like, well, did you actually do all that in this short period of time? Fair enough. Um, so no, just be positive, be polite, keep it short, and always be the one to end the conversation. If you can tell him you have places to go, things to do, he's going to actually believe that your life is super busy right. and that you need to get on with it. It's one of those sort of stealing back the power kind of tactics. Exactly. Gotcha. I do have another question related to that, which is when you run into your ex with somebody new, you know, they're out on a date or, or how do you just handle the whole situation if your ex is dating, your ex-boyfriend is dating somebody, some new woman? Yeah. And you find um, out about that. Obviously, that's not a good thing, right? It's going to be a little it's tough, tough to handle. Yeah. It is tough. And I mean, you know, it's a really emotional thing too. It's hard to see the person you care about and who you're trying to get back has moved on. But at the or same have time. They. Or have they. Exactly. Because often it's just a sort of a rebound sort of... You know. Exactly. I mean, so that's exactly why I want to show him what he's missing out on. Right. Okay. You don't want him to see that, you know, you're hiding in the corner, upset about it, or you're acting irrational about it. So, you know, if it does happen where you have to interact with him again, be positive, act like you're unfazed by it. You look like a better option than her, the new exactly. chick that he's with. Exactly. And if you can with, pull right? it off in that way, chances are she's going to ask him once you leave, who's that? And if he says, oh, that's my ex-girlfriend... She's gonna look insecure, being like, "Well, she seems she seems amazing, you know. She seems so positive and kind and friendly. What went wrong?" So you want to kind of plant that seed of you are the better option in a very subtle way, though. That I honestly, I, I I completely agree, and I know from my experience working with my clients, that's a lot easier um, than it actually sounds because oh, totally. you know your your ex already loved you um, and liked a lot of things about you. We know that because you were together for a long time. So you just have to sort of bring that uh, person that you were back out to the forefront, and you'll be a better option in your the eyes of your your ex boyfriend. Um, so what are some signs to look for that indicate that your ex boyfriend is you know regretting the breakup or thinking about taking you back? Um, what are the signs that show that those things are happening in his mind? Okay, uh, so the most obvious one is he contacts you. Whether right. it's calling you, texting you, messaging you on Facebook, whatever the case is, if he's reaching out to you, that's a sure sign that he is regretting the breakup. 
Agreed. In my experience, that often happens in the no contact period. So, you know, 15 days of not, not hearing from you is enough to make a lot of guys, you know, will just break down and call you out of the blue, um, which you're saying is basically a great sign, right? Oh, totally. Okay. But I mean, there are more subtle signs as well. Um, a big one is if you reach a friend, start getting a little bit right. more curious about what you've been doing. Makes sense. They might start prying, asking you who you're spending time with, what you've been up to. And also if you start showing up where you are. Yeah. I mean, your ex knows you. He knows your routine. He knows the places you like to spend time. So if he's suddenly making an appearance there, there's a good chance that it's not just a coincidence. You might be looking for a reason to kind of reconnect there. That makes perfect sense. What about jealousy? Because I think that's one that any, any signs of jealousy on your ex-boyfriend's part is a clear signal that he's not done with you. He hasn't let go completely, right? Oh, for sure. For so sure. if you're seeing jealousy, that's good news, basically, ladies. Yeah. Um, so tying into that, you know, once you, you see those signs um, from your ex-boyfriend, you know that he's sort of sort of at least somewhat interested in getting back together or thinking about it. How do you take the next step? You know, where do you go from there? For sure. So I mean, this one's tough because you're going to get excited about this. Right. If you're and trying you to get you don't want to screw up at this point either, right? Because no. you've gotten so far. You've gotten right. pretty far here. You do not want to mess this one up. So take it slow. That's okay. honestly the best advice I can give you there. Yep. Take it slow. Uh, there's this great concept called the cat string concept. Yep. And it's the whole idea of if you have a kitten and you're waving the string in front uh, of the yeah. kitten, okay, I got you. now he's going to chase it. And yep. then as soon as he catches it, he's not interested. Right. Your ex is going to do the same. If you give him too much too soon, he's going to pull back and just say, you know what, we're done. Okay, so so I guess basically, ladies now, they know that we need to take it slow at this phase. Um, the question probably on a lot of your minds, ladies, is how do we contact you know, my ex-boyfriend, how do I actually talk to him and, and sort of what is the, the, the order of the, the different stages I'm going to go through when I want to sort of rebuild the attraction and get him back? Are you a texting fan? Yes, you are, I okay. am a texting fan. I think a lot can be accomplished in text messages yeah. if done properly. And so you recommend starting with the text? Yes. Okay. So I actually have a series of texts that I like to talk about. Okay. They're called the triple R text. So mm -hmm. it is reminder, remember, and reminisce. Oh, that's good. Okay. The reminder one is to come warm him up to the idea of hearing from you. Right. So in this one, you're going to want to tell him something that he's going to find newsworthy, something that you know that he likes and kind of give him a gentle reminder about whatever it is. And this is all under the radar stuff. We don't, we don't, he doesn't know we want to get back together yet. Exactly. Right? Okay. You're not asking for a reply from him. You're simply saying, you know, hey, I heard that this new place is opening and I thought you might be interested in it okay, or gotcha. whatever the case is. From there. It sounds very familiar. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I do have recommend something <laughs> almost exactly the same my program. So. Yeah, so from there we're going to go to the remember text. So okay. this one is going to ask him to remember something that you shared together, but it's going to do so subtly by asking him a question about it. Okay. So it, you're going to get him to recall a memory. Again, I'm I sure. I was inspired by Brad Browning, I can see there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I completely agree, obviously. Um, that's fantastic. I love, that's my favorite text, personally, because you can also use jealousy as a sort of a, a little, throw a little bit of jealousy in there as well. Oh, yeah. All in the same message. Yeah, spice it up. Exactly. Yep. Um, so, and folks, sorry, in fact, may just, if you want to learn more about texting your ex and some, some sample messages, um, you can go to breakupbrad.com and watch the free video that I've got up there on my site, or you can go check out Amy's video, um, which is just a more generic uh, video for ladies on how to talk to men, and you've got texting I stuff do. in that video, I and that's at coachnorth.com, I believe, correct? Yes. Breakupbrad.com, coachnorth.com, and you can learn more about which texts and get some specific examples. So let's say you send three texts over a period of a week, right, and you get sort of two positive responses out of those. Um, what, what, what's at the next step at that point? Yeah, I mean, I would I would recommend stick with the texting for a little bit longer. And do you for sure that think and that he's gonna be receptive to more? Exactly, okay, gotcha. yeah. I mean, you wanna be at a point where you are communicating in text messages comfortably with one another before you jump the gun and go, hey, let's meet for coffee, or hey, let's, you know, Go for a stroll, whatever the case is. And just to clarify, um, we're all, I think we're on the same page with this. It's all positive, fun types of conversations you're yes, having, right, at this stage? Absolutely. So no drama, no sitting around, you know, till <laughs> three in the morning talking about the future and things like that, which I'm sure, you know, you've had those discussions already and probably that's worse than doing nothing at all, right? Oh, oh yeah. So yeah. keep it fun, I guess, basically, is the moral of the story. Um, do you recommend phoning? Are you like, are you into the phoning thing or do you just generally suggest transitioning into an in-person meeting? Um, I mean, I think it really depends on the person. Right. Um, I have nothing against the phone call, personally, but I know some women are a little bit more uncomfortable kind of picking up that with their ex again. Uh, so texting, again, is a great way to start. If you're comfortable on the phone, by all means, go for it. Uh, there's obviously, well, there probably is going to be a point where you do make a phone call before you do meet up in person again. Sure. Um, and I mean, you have a ton of strategies on that as well, I know. With I do, yeah, breakupbrow.com, and you can learn more about those. I, I like to, um, 
if you're not a texting type person, one of the things that I suggest, um, and this might work for the ladies as well, is to call one at a time when you know he's not going to be there to answer, so you can leave a voicemail. I think there might actually be a, a service online or something that you could just leave a voicemail anyway, um, and it won't even ring. Um, but I like that because then it's sort of more like a text, right? That he doesn't feel obligated to yes. respond on the spot, and you're not going to get caught up in a in a real serious, long, drawn out conversation at yeah. that point if you're just leaving a voicemail, right? Yeah, no, I love that idea. I think it's um, a great idea. But I mean, for me certainly, I, I want to lead up to to the to the meet, meet up in person, right? Where you can flirt, you can build organic, natural attraction in person, right? So is that that that's sort of where you're you're oh, heading anyway? Yeah, yeah, that's the goal. Great. <laughs> so, ladies, that's what you're working towards, and then at that point, it's sort of just basically flirting. Um, you know, making him want you again, essentially, right? Showing him all the things that, that led him to fall in love with you in the first place. Do you recommend playing sort of the little mind games like waiting an hour after you, you know, receive a text to respond, things like that? Yes, for sure. The last thing you want is for him to think that you're sitting there staring at your phone, waiting right. for him to write back. I mean, if you don't skip a beat, if he's texting you and you're answering right away, it's going to look like you don't have much going on. Going and back to the whole keeping busy and, you know, having right. this awesome life, you need to keep up with that image. Projecting high value, kind of like I'm awesome and, yeah. Exactly. And that's more of a generic thing too, right? Like not just for when you're in a breakup, but just ladies oh, just in, general, in general. Just, yeah, don't always respond right away. Yep. Um, what do you, what's your sort of standard recommendation? Like half an hour or mix it up? Or? Uh, mix it up. I mean, you don't want him to catch on either, right? So you don't right. want it to always be, oh, it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes. And also too, you want to be considerate. If he's asking you a time sensitive question, you right, gotta answer right. him. You don't want the guy standing in line asking, you know, what kind of ice cream should I get, and you ignoring him for forty-five minutes. That makes sense. So don't don't stir up the hornet's nest, basically, right? Yeah. Exactly. Keep yeah. it fun. Um, make him want to keep texting. Um, all right, well, Amy, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. It's been great. Um, I hope you ladies got something out of this, this interview. Um, if you want more from Amy, um, you can check out coachnorth.com, her website, or you can also check out her YouTube channel. She's got a great YouTube channel. She is far more popular than, than I am here on YouTube. <laughs> um, so that's, you just aim, search Amy North uh, in, uh, in YouTube. And of course, ask questions. If you have any questions, you want to comment on what we've talked about, just ask them in the below, and um, certainly I will respond. And I think you respond to your, oh, your sure. questions as well if yep. they leave one on one of your videos. Always. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the interview, and we'll talk to you soon.